ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال الملا من قوم فرعون اتذر موسى وقومه ليفسدوا في الارض ويذرك والهتك قال سنقتل ابناءهم ونستحي نساءهم وانا فوقهم قاهرون قال موسى لقوم استعينوا بالله واصبروا ان الارض لله يورثها من يشاء والعاقبه للمتقين قالوا اوذينا من قبل ان تاتينا ومن بعد ما جئتنا قال عسى ربكم ان يهلك عدوكم ويستخلفكم في الارض فينظر كيف تعملون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ان الله لا يمل الظالم فاذا اخذه لم يفلته وقال النبي صلى الله عليه واله وصحبه وسلم عجبا لامر المؤمن ان امره كله له خير وليس ذلك الا للمؤمن إن صابته سراء شكرا فكان خيرا له وإن صابته ذراء صبرا فكان خيرا له In the verses that I just recited Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala brings our attention to the perpetual struggle of truth and falsehood justice and injustice through the lens and the life of Pharaoh and Moses Musa alayhi salatu was salam The Quran tells us that the struggle for justice and injustice is one that will continue until the day of judgment The Quran reminds us that we must always be on the side of haq we must always be on the side of justice Once the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam he was he said unsur akhaka zalimun aw mazlum help your brother be he oppressed or oppressor The sahaba they said ya rasulullah we understand helping the oppressed but how do we help the oppressor The prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said grab his hand and stop him do what you can to stop the oppression In the verses that I shared we find the problem where oppression begins Oppression begins by the illusion of power Oppression begins by the illusion of power The councilmen of Pharaoh they say to Pharaoh are you going to leave Moses and his people to spread corruption who was the true spreader of corruption it wasn't Bani Israel it wasn't the people of Moses they just wanted their liberation they just wanted freedom Moses was sent to bring them out of captivity but to some people that looked like corruption قال سنقتل ابناءهم he says don't worry about this don't worry about shirdimatun qalilun don't worry about as the quran says this small group of people don't worry about them سنقتل ابناءهم ونستحيي نساءهم don't worry we'll, we'll, we'll slaughter their sons and we'll keep their daughters alive the times have changed they've gone beyond that وَإِنَّا فَوْقَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ Don't worry. We have power over them and here lies the test of humanity. Here lies the test. When God gives you authority, will you forget his authority over you? There lies the test that everyone has. He says wa inna fawqahum qahirun don't worry we have power over them i ask you what is one of the names of allah al qahar he is the one in control 
He is the one in control. قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ What did Moses say to his people as a reply? He said, إِسْتَعِينُوا بِاللَّهِ إِسْتَعِينُوا بِاللَّهِ Seek help with God. Ask Allah to help you. Turn to Allah in this moment where we're searching for our freedom, where we're striving for our freedom, but some people see that as a strive for corruption. He says to them, Ista'inu billah, don't give up. Don't stop. Don't give up. Stay true to who you are. You are someone who strives for justice, speaks up for justice. Stay true to that. Never ever stop. But you can't do it alone. Ista'inu billah. Our power was never in material things. The power that we have lies in the unseen connection with Rabbul Alameen. Your power lies in your Qiyamul Layl. Your power lies in you lifting your hands. That's where your power lies. That's how Dawood killed John. That is how we are told over and over again. And in fact, throughout the seerah, the only time that we start to lose is in the battle of Hunayn when we thought numbers were, were going to be the cure and guarantee victory. That was when we slipped up and we were taught in a lesson. That was the first time we said, hey, our numbers are huge. We'll win because of our, mili our, our, our numbers. And Allah says, no, 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 no. You only will be victorious so long as you stay connected to me. Do you know why the secret is? Because the hope is if you remember Allah when you are low, when you have strength, you'll always remember Allah and you won't continue the cycle of oppression. Ista'inu <laughs> billah is what Moses said to Bani Israel. Seek out God's help. Wasfiru, but be patient. Don't expect it to come when you want it because there's a plan that Allah has. And it's not our plan, it's His plan. And we must be patient. The Sahaba came to the Prophet ﷺ one time in the time of Mecca when persecution was at its max. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, make dua. And the Prophet in this one moment, he got upset. And he said, you're being too hasty. You're being too hasty. You must be more patient. You must be more patient. Wasbiru, he says, Moses, that is. Inna al who owns this world? Inna al who owns this world? Ask yourself that question. Inna al yurithuha mayyasha. Allah is the owner of this dunya. Yurithuha mayyasha. He gives it to who he wills. All power besides his power is an illusion. There's a test in that phrase for two people. There's a test for the one who thinks they have power. Will you remember Allah? And there's a test for the one who are the objects of other people's power. Will you remember that they truly don't have power over you? Yurithuha may yasha wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen. And the final outcome will be for the people who always remembered Allah. The people of Bani Israel responded differently to Moses. They were in front of an ocean, seeing their doom imminent, with an enemy right behind them. And they started to blame their prophet. They said, This religion of yours, this way of life has only caused us Hardship, they were trying to jump ship. All Moses said was, Asa Rabbukum an yuhlika aduwakum. Who knows, perhaps Allah will get rid of our enemies. And He will put you in charge. These people who were just slaves, their prophet is saying to them, just wait until. You are kings. And that time did come. At this time, I remind us of a hadith of the Prophet. It is a hadith you've probably heard before, but 
The hadith never change. It is our circumstances that change. And just the same way when they heard the verse, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٍ إِلَّا رَسُولٍ They said it was as if it was the first time we heard it. Maybe when I share this hadith with you, you'll feel the same way. One time, Ibn Abbas was riding shotgun with the Prophet Wasallam on a camel. And the Prophet says to him, Ya ghulam inni u'alimuka, u'alimuka kalimat. He says, O oh son, I want to teach you some lessons. I need you to know this for your life because it's what will get you through the difficult moments. The ups and downs. Allah says these are the turns of time that happen. He says, let me teach you some words that will help you. In your difficult moments. He says, Be mindful of God. Always remember Allah. In these moments of fitna, we must always stay conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never lose sight. Allah will protect you. Remember Allah, you'll see Him wherever you turn. Then he says, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ إِذَا سَأَلْتَ As we tag our, our leaders to wake them up to reality. إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ When you ask, ask Allah. وَإِذَا سَأَلْتَ When you need help, turn to Allah. Turn to Allah. Have you been able to sleep the last few days? Have you been able to wake up at the Qiyamul Layl and raise your hands? Wa alam, and here is where I need everyone to look inside their hearts. The Prophet والسلام, he says, Wa alam, anna al ummah, the words have never hit as much as they do now. وَأَلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةِ No, in your heart, if the entire world اجتمعت على أن ينفعوك بشيء لم ينفعوك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله لك وإن اجتمعوا على أن يضروك بشيء لم يضروك إلا بشيء قد كتب الله عليك رفيت الأقلام وجفت الصحف the Prophet speaks to us. Jawamul Kalim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before I translate the hadith, remember he said, Ashadd al nas bala an al anbiya. Whatever difficulties we go through, remember the prophets have gone through worse. They haven't just talked the talk, they've walked this literally. Walking out of thought if the Prophet was stoned. Stoned, walking, and as the rocks would hit his ankles and he would feel the pain of rock on bone, he would collapse down to cover himself and they would lift him up again and again he would feel the, the pain of rock on bone and walk straight out of Ta'if and he collapses in a garden. This is our Rasul. He doesn't just talk. He's lived this reality. So he says, I want you to know something, Ibn Abbas. You must believe this now more than ever. If the entire world, his words, not mine, if the entire world gathered together to benefit you in any way, they could never benefit you except for what God has written for you. And if the entire world, it's not over, and if the entire world tried to harm you, they could never harm you except for what Allah has already written Allah is in control. All power besides Allah is an illusion. Allah is in control. So what do we do? We keep moving forward. وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ after the battle of Uhud, we lost a lot. The Prophet lost Hamza. Ah, oh, his heart broke. We lost a lot. Mus'ab bin Umair was killed. 
And when Mus'ab bin Umair was killed, the rumors spread that Muhammad is dead. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People lost their minds. They didn't know what to do. Some of them fled the battlefield. They, they ran back to Medina. They gave up. They stopped moving forward. Because now what to do? What do we do now? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are the ones, istazallahum as shaytan. Allah, they cause, shaytan caused them to slip up. There were other people who lost their consciousness. They just jumped right into the battlefield, unaware of where they're going. And there were other people who stayed focused. They kept their eyes looking for where the Prophet would be and they found him and they stood next to him. In these moments of tribulation, you must not ever give up. You must always stay connected to Allah. Do not give up. And do not be afraid. Sounds familiar. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? As the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr are fleeing, there's a bounty on their head, everyone is after them and they're in a cave. The enemy right above. Abu Bakr says, Ya Rasulullah, if they just look down. He says, don't look at who's above us, look at who's above them. Don't look at who's above us, Abu Bakr. Look at who's above them. Don't look at who's ab above us, dropping whatever they want to drop. No, look at who's above them. He says, La ta'zan, don't worry. And that's what I say to myself and to everyone in this room. La ta'zan, la ta'zan, la ta'zan. Inna Allah ma'ana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. Propaganda ain't a new thing, y'all. Propaganda ain't a new thing. When the Prophet's message was beginning in the fourth year of Nabuwa, the leaders of Quraysh, they said, well, what are we going to say about this man? All the people are coming to Mecca for Hajj. We can't have people listening to this Quran. We can't have people seeing this lifestyle of justice and uprightness that questions our way of life, we can't have that. So what do we do? Well, let's come up with a narrative. Let's frame the narrative that we want to. They said, well, what should we say? And they started to talk on how we're going to spin this, how we're going to frame this man who's bringing things to our society. They said, well, let's call him crazy. I said, well, that doesn't fit the narrative. We can't say that. He doesn't look crazy. Okay, well, let's call him a poet. They said, well, that doesn't fit either. And they kept searching and searching for a good narrative to spin it. And they found what they thought would be the strongest narrative to, 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 to skew this whole situation. So people don't see where the justice is and the injustice is. So people don't see who the oppressor are and the oppressed are. They'd had to spin that. But our deen has taught us how to handle all of these situations by looking at the life of Rasul They said, I know what. Walid bin Mughira, he says, Da'ni ufakkir. Fuqutila kayfa fakkir. Man. He said, we'll call him a, a, a magician whose magic splits up families. Nothing more sacred to the Arab than their, their family. Amr bin Tufayl al-Dawsi, he said, I was so scared by the propaganda, by the rhetoric around Muslims and Muhammad, I stuffed cotton in my ear when I went to go do Hajj. I tell you, brothers and sisters, you don't know how many people become Muslim due to the propaganda you thought would push them away from Islam. I'm one of them. Pharaoh thought he was spinning the narrative when he brought the magicians and he brought Moses and he said, hey, everyone, let's all watch this. Lo and behold, he was the cause of da'wah, bringing people to the message. My point is this isn't new. 
This isn't new. We, as an ummah, have dealt with this time and time again. And if you thought the propaganda is strong now, you're underestimating how, how hard it must have been when we were only 35 in number. There were 35 Muslims, al al akthar 40. But the message got out. People saw truth. To Fayyad bin Amr, he says, I had cotton in my ear and I was doing tawaf and I saw Muhammad standing there, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I saw him there and for a moment I said, I'm a smart man. Why don't I listen to him myself? And he took the cotton out of his ears. Speed up, 10 minutes later, he's saying, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Wa la tahinu wa la tahzanu. Wa antum nahnu a'loun in kuntum mu'mineen. May Allah give us iman. May Allah allow us to see Allah in every moment. May Allah make it easy for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. إن الحمد لله. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله The tyrant's greatest strength is the fear that he places in our hearts. But the antidote to that fear is du'a and tawakkur. When the fear is gone, you become invincible. And I mean no hyperbole in that statement. When the Sahaba were told that the numbers had gathered and we should be worried. Allah says, the Sahaba were people who were told, everybody's come out to get you. You Muslims are done now. That's it. Better be scared. We don't fear anyone but Allah. We don't look above. We look above the one who thinks they're above. فَزَادَهُمْ imana. Allah says about the Sahaba, their iman increased. Their iman increased in the calamity. The best people on earth right now are Ahl of Philistine. Best people on earth. I say that based on the hadith of the Prophet. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Ashadda nas bala ala al anbiya, thumma al amthal fal amthal. The Prophet ﷺ said that the people that get the most calamities in this dunya are the anbiya, the prophets of God. Because this dunya ain't nothing. <laughs> this ain't it. Then the Prophet said, and those who are closest to the prophets, closest to the prophets. These are awliya Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these moments allow us to speak however we can and raise our voices however we can to be a part of being on the right side of truth and adr. May Allah allow us to raise our hands and feel that pain that the Prophet ﷺ explained, Al-Mu'minuna ka rajulin wahid, in ishtaka aynahu ishtaka rasuhu, in ishtaka aynahu ishtaka kullu. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you are feeling pain, if you are agitated, if you are worried and you're unsettled, well, that is a sign of iman. Because the believer is like one body. When one part hurts, the rest of the body reacts to that pain. So that is a sign of faith. But let that reaction motivate us to increase our tawakkul on Allah, increase our prayers 
and increase our closeness to Allah. Now is not to hide, time to hide your Islam. Now is the time to show it even more to Allah and to the people around you. May Allah give us strength. Allahumma ahris ahlul Filistin bi aynika allati la tanam. Allahumma ja'alli ahlul Filistin al nusrata wal izza wal ghalaba wal quwa wal ayba. Allahumma ansur ahlul Filistin wa thabbit aqadamahum. Allahumma ansur ikhwanana fi Filistin ya arham al rahimin. Allahumma har al masjid al aqsa wa jbur kasrahum wa shfi marzahum wa taqabbal shuhadaahum bi rahmatika ya arham al rahimin. Allahumma inna nastawdi'uka bayt al muqaddis wa ahl al quds wa kull al Filistin. Allahumma inna la namlik li ahl al Filistin illa al dua. إن لا نملك إلا الدعاء يا أرحم الراحمين فيا رب لا ترد لنا دعوة دعاء ولا تخيب لنا رجاء وأنت أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نستودعك بيت المقدس وأهل القدس وكل فلسطين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصرك واننا في فلسطين يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم قال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وعلم على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله وعلى وعلى أصحابه الأجمعين يا أرحم الراحمين إباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله تعالى يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون أقيم صفوفكم